not to really depends. Depends what time you go to bed, but uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so my second question then really leads on to what comes next, I guess, which is going into the bedroom itself. So what are some of the tips that you can share with us regarding the actual the, the space you're moving into, whether it's to do with the, the curtains, the, the weight of the duvet or the smell, the sounds? What sort of tips can you give people for improving their actual bedroom to make their sleep hopefully a little bit better? Well, um, your bedroom should be a sanctuary. Mm -hmm. And when you step over the threshold of the door of your bedroom, that should do a load of the work for you. For example, when you step into your bedroom, if it's tidy, if you've got maybe a scented candle or a bunch of not really nice fresh flowers, you've got the sense, you, you're using all of your senses, you know, the sight, smell, so sight, you know, walking into a tidy room, there's nothing... It's really nice to walk into a room that's been done with love, if you like. So you've got your lovely bedding, you know, that's the sense of touch. You know, you, you're visual, visually, it feels good when you walk in. Mm. You know, you're, just, you're using all the senses. So the sense of smell is very, very, very powerful. And if you have a, you know, one of those um, essential oil burners or something like that with the same scent the relaxing scent whatever scent that you like mm -hmm. that will do a lot of the relaxing work for you so the moment you smell that smell your emotions will change because right. it's so it's so powerful the sense of smell mm. so leaving your tech you know if you've got a television in your bedroom you need to take it off the wall and put it somewhere else sure no tvs in the bedroom <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's upset a few people <laughs> no clutter under the bed Bedroom is the sleeping and sex, and that's it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it should be a beautiful space, and it should be a space that you really look forward to going into, not where you've got stuff stuffed under the bed or you've got a TV in there and it's sort of a bit untidy. Or you know, it needs to be a nurturing, sacred sanctuary where the moment you step over it, you leave yourself behind and you step into bliss. Yeah. Stepping into bliss. <laughs> I, I really like the sound of that. And I, I like the way you sort of said, just stepping over that threshold, you know, the work should be done already. It should already, and that's down to, I guess, setting all these things up that you're speaking about. So you walk into that nice space. So that, that, that's a really good sort of uh, visual to have in your mind. And in terms of uh, bedding, I mean, I'd heard somebody say that, you, you know, the heavier the duvet, the better that is on the body. It has a sort of a calming effect. Have you got any insights on that at all? The actual weight of the bedding? Anything yeah, about that at all? It does. Yeah, that's, mm. it does have a calming effect. Um, the only problem is, um, I know that some of those weighted blankets come in different types of materials, whether they're warmer or cooler, mm -hmm. but you still have weight. Yeah. <clears throat> but some people have issues with uh, heat. Yeah. Sure. And if they've got weight on them, they still feel really, really hot. Yeah. Um, so it depends. Like, for example, me, I feel nurtured and more relaxed when i have got sort of a more of a weighted type blanket on mm, sure. um whereas someone else might feel claustrophobic with a weighted type blanket on so it just depends yeah. on how how you feel but whatever you've got on your bed you need to feel nurtured you know treat yourself to <coughs> excuse me really lovely sheets yeah, you know have, sure. you know mm. that should be some that should be a priority yeah, you know, yeah. not sheets that have been on there for like 25 years, you know, that you only sort of have like three sets and they're yeah. sort of like falling apart. Yeah, you know, sure. if you're not sleeping very well, invest a little bit in your space. Yeah, yeah. nice sheets, you know, nice silk pajamas if you have pajamas, or you know, just something nice so that you feel nurtured. Because sometimes, you know, when you're feeling so exhausted. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the time, you know, those sorts of peoples are people are givers and they're giving the whole time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you want to kind of give back to yourself, you know, give yourself the gift. Mm -hmm. You know, your soul will go, oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. You know, your soul will go, thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. 
No, mm. great. And you, you touched on another interesting point there. I mean, the whole thing's interesting, but one that just jumped out to me there when you mentioned heat. So a number of women that I work with are going through the menopause change and they have, you know, at night they, they heat up, they warm up. Uh, one lady I, I listened to described it as, uh, her name's Dr. Marilyn Glanville. She said they're no longer called um, hot flushers. In America, they're called power surges, apparently. I don't know if you've heard that. But anyway, um, so what, what advice would you give to women who are going through the menopause change that, you know, that are kept up at night just because they're getting very hot? What are some of the things that maybe they could think about introducing to help with that? Well, um, yeah, there are some things from the perspective or the, the lineage that I work from Ayurveda, um, there are certain things, certain herbs that you can try, certain food types to avoid. You know, it's something that you need to look at from an individual perspective, you know, what that individual mm. is. But, yeah. you know, there are things that you can use. And one of the herbs um, is called shatavari. Again, you know, it's something that you would do as an individual, but shatavari is known for looking after the female waters, the female hormones. It's, it's a cooling herb for mm -hmm. a start. It's cool, also very cooling. And um, it's, good, it's good for balancing hormones. So a lot of women find that shatavari helps with things like hot flushes. Mm -hmm. uh, food, actually, the, when I was saying about eating in the evening, you know, one of the things you need to do if you're having hot flushes is make it light in the evening. You know, they have the cooling foods. Yeah. Don't have heating foods. Mm. Um, you know, so again, from an Ayurvedic perspective, you know, there's sort of like different food types, more cooling, more heating, but, you know, no heating, you know, spices that are heating, you know, cooling things, you know, like mm. a cooling juice, for example. Yeah. You know, you could have, you know, cucumber and mint and also an apple or something. Sure. You know, something cooling, but don't allow your body to be producing more heat because it's digesting food. Yeah. I mean, that makes such good sense. That makes such good sense. Yeah. So the hot Indian yeah. curries are probably not a good idea then? No, no, yeah. not, not a good idea. Definitely not in the evening, no. no, no not, not, in the evening. not in the evening, no. Okay, brilliant. So before I cover my third question, so we've looked at um, – the routine leading up to going to sleep. We spoke about that, which was great. Some good tips and good insights there. We've just spoken about the environment and how the environment should do the work for you as you step over that threshold, as you put okay. it. Um, 